Okay. Hello, everyone, and hello, dear friends. Welcome to What Works X. My name is Nada, and I am part of the KHDA team. I am joined today by my colleagues Magnus and Maya, and we're so honoured that you have taken the time out from what I know must be a very busy schedule to connect with us and with your colleagues around Dubai in this virtual space. As usual, we will be using an interactive tool today to engage with you all, our esteemed participants. So I would love to invite you to go to menti.com and enter the code 503024, please, if you do not mind. And you will see your first mentee question there for you to ponder and share your responses. The great thing about mentee and what I love about it most is that it's anonymous. So we have no idea who is saying what, creating a safe space for everyone to be reflective. So just have a look at that first question and just ponder, what are the things you have control over right now? You know, <laughs> We did not ask for COVID to happen. We were not prepared for this situation. How could we ever be, in fact? And our worlds have turned upside down and probably inside and out as we navigate the unknown. And there are many things that we can't control as we rely on experts and governments to keep us safe as possible. However, there are still many things that we do have in control. And, you know, they might be small, but they do add up. And so what are some of those things that you can control right now? I'll give you a few moments to reflect and contribute one or two words, and we'll see a lovely word cloud form there on our screens. So I can see I can control routine, actions, my thoughts that's appearing nice and center and bold. So quite a few of you have said thoughts and that's absolutely it absolutely resonates with me as well my words my actions can control our patience our time our sanity <laughs> can control routine routine does give us a bit of structure and a little bit of normalcy so routine has been very important not just for us as adults but also for um, our own children, for our students, for our community. I love someone's put there this moment. Yes, this moment right now, we're all together and we can control that little space right now. Body, yes, being well, exercising, work, work balance, being able to control that. And of course, it's perfectly healthy for educators like yourselves. Your levels of well being will ebb and flow based on what's happening around you at work, what's happening at home, what's happening in your community, what's happening back in your own home countries as well. The struggle is absolutely real and it's okay. But it's how we respond to the struggle that matters. And I believe having a well being toolkit that we can all dig deep into will help us through these hard times. And what you can control is a big part of your own well-being. And focusing on what you can control may go a long way to supporting your well-being. So thoughts are there still center and bold in the middle. Someone's got in there almost everything. <laughs> yes. As, uh, I love that one, my expenses. <laughs> yes, we can all control where we spend our money. Thank you so much for everyone that participated in that. So this is our 14th webinar on the What Works X platform. And in way of background, um, I'll just explain how we got here. So in 2012, a movement known as What Works began and would come to change the culture of education in Dubai. 
It was a series of events that was anchored in a strength-based approach and was focused on collaboration. What Works X is the same concept, just the platform changes and perhaps with the support of this awesome technology, it's allowed for even more teachers to participate and share what's working in their own schools. Okay, so moving on to two today's webinar, I am so pleased today to have the wonderful Erica presenting um, today's What Works X session. She's a passionate educator with well-being at the core of everything she does. And she has kindly offered her time to share her school's journey with us today. And her presentation is titled, How to Move Forward with Purpose and Well-being at Heart of Your Own School Community. Her presentation will then be followed by a Q&A discussion, which will be facilitated by the awesome Magnus. And um, unfortunately, webinars on the Teams platform uh, does not allow verbal interaction with the audience and the presenters. But please, please, please do ask your questions throughout the presentation by submitting your questions in the Q&A feature to the right, whatever the right way is for you, um, to the right of your screen and ensuring that your questions are on topic. And the wonderful Maya is there at the back end to moderate the questions coming through on the chat features. I'll be back at the end to um, close the session and to also seek your quick feedback using the menti.com feature again. So just keep that opened in the background, whether it's on a device or in a second browser on your um, second page on your browser, that's perfectly OK. So for now, without further ado, I will pass on to my colleague Magnus to introduce our presenter for today. And I'll bring Magnus up onto your screen. There you go. Thanks, Magnus. Thank you, Nada. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure this afternoon to introduce our presenter, Erica El Kadi. Erica is the head of secondary at the Jumeirah Baccalaureate School here in Dubai. And Erica has been kind enough to put together a presentation which responds to the theme of how to move forward with purpose and well being at heart of your school community. Erica is a Dutch national who's been living and working in Dubai for over 13 years. She first joined Uptown School in 2007 and became the head of secondary at Jumeirah Baccalaureate School in September of 2011. Erica holds a master's degree in American Studies and History, the latter subject she taught for many years at MYP and DP level. And Erica has several consultancy roles for the IB and has been working in IB schools for almost 25 years. So on behalf of all of us, I'd like to hand over the word to Erica and her presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nada and Magnus, for your very kind words. Um, it's a pleasure to be here on a Thursday afternoon. Uh, it sorry, is Erica. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Do you mind turning on your video, please? Okay, I'll do that as well. Thank you. Thank so you. you can see me? Yeah, and I hope that uh, you will be able to put my presentation up because we had some technical difficulties from my side. Um, but again, thank you all so much for, for joining us on a Thursday afternoon. It is week 13 of lockdown. Um, we are all tired. Um, we still have two more very busy weeks to go. So I really appreciate that you are here. Um, I have been, as Magnus said, the head of uh, secondary at Jumeirah Baccalaureate School for quite some time. And we are an IB school, a relatively small school with um, 800 students. Um, when I was approached to, to, to present this afternoon, I was really thinking of what probably is on all our minds. And that is, you know, how we are going to move forward with purpose and well-being at heart. And in order to be able to do so, I think it is very important first to, to, to stop ourselves and to say, you know, where, where are we at this moment in time? And we have lots of questions at the moment. And if you look at the next slide, you will see that the things that are on our minds at the moment, who are 
you know, the things that are causing us anxiety are, for example, things like, you know, what are the standards for reopening? What is school going to look like? Are we going to be able to welcome our students back on our campus in August? Are we going to continue with online teaching? Is it going to be some sort of blended approach? Are students going to wear masks? A parent told me that he wants his children to wear a shield. Um, a lot of questions there which cause anxiety, but it also results in, you know, staffing challenges. How many students are coming back? We all know that some students, unfortunately, will leave Dubai in the summer because of employment situations. But we also may have students who are going to other schools. Yesterday, there was an article in the Gulf News um, that some parents are thinking of going to schools where the tuition fees are uh, slightly lower than where they are at the moment. So that's a lot of unknowns for us to plan you know, forward. And then parents have concerns not only about the students' you know, safety, they also have concerns about their um, learning gaps. Some parents have been very concerned that you know, students may fall behind, even though we have been telling them that all the students are in the same boat and that we will continue working hard with their students when we go back to some sort of normalcy. And so in the next slide, you know, we see that there are more unknowns and that is, you know, what is the well-being levels of our students and adults in the school at the moment? We are constantly checking in, but, you know, we are mainly checking in in the online world. We are not seeing people in 3D. And so even though we may feel assured that everybody is doing well, there are still a lot of unknowns. And I already addressed a little bit the student learning needs. We have seen that some of our students are thriving in the online world, but we also have kids that it's very difficult to get in touch with and we don't know how they are really doing and what their needs are going to be when we are back in school. And then another unknown is that we are assessing at the moment things that we feel worked really well and what kind of professions would we like to carry over to um, the, the next term. So we have at the moment lots of unknowns. And if you have a look at the next slide, you see that we are asking ourselves the question, so where are we going to move forward to? And the buzzword that we hear all the time in the media is the new normal. But do we really know what that new normal is going to be? And this is the first Menti question, and I'm going to hand over to Nada. And that you will see on the next slide is really the new normal. What is it? Do we have a clear understanding of what a new normal could look like? So if you could please tick, you know, what you feel most comfortable with. Do you feel that you have a clear understanding what that buzzword, the new normal, could look like? If you have a very clear understanding, please click that somewhat. I see that's one person at somewhat two. Unclear. OK, don't be shy, just tick somewhat unclear. OK. Do we only have six participants at the moment? No, there are seven people. Oh, nine now. OK, it looks like the majority of the participants, they are somewhat clear. Erica, okay. we've got around uh, 50 people online. OK, well then people don't be shy and please tell us um, yeah, OK, more people are now um, sharing their thoughts with us. OK, there has not one person clicked the very clear button. Uh, and somewhat unclear and very unclear, it's a tie. And um, the majority of the participants so far, and I don't see any movement anymore, so we will go back to the presentation. So um, 
half of you say that you are somewhat clear and um, the other half is mostly unclear. So the one million dollar question that we are having at the moment is, you know, how are we going from a situation with so many unknowns and questions um, to a situation which is the new normal, which we also don't know much about. Now, what we have been talking about at JBS for quite some time is that we actually feel that, you know, well-being should be our starting point. And um, in the old normal, if I can say that, the focus has been very much in schools about um, inspections, about assessment data, about attainment, about progress, about leak tables. And we actually feel, and this is also the thinking of, you know, positive education, um, uh, proponents is that we need to focus very much on, you know, well-being first, because there is a clear link and that has been shown by em uh, empirical research that there is a clear link between learning that takes place and then, you know, teaching and learning. So if we go to the next slide, then we actually come to the conclusion that in times of so much uncertainty, and what some people call, you know, a real crisis <clears throat> is that leadership matters most. And this is not only the leaders, you know, in, at the top, the senior leaders in the school. This also applies to the middle leaders, but to teachers who are leaders in their classrooms. In times of uncertainty, people look up to us and they need guidance. And so the next slide, we see that there is this leadership approach which um, um, has been conceptualized by a gentleman called uh, Donald um, uh, Winnicott. And he felt that all leaders uh, must hold. And he actually said, because he was a, a British pediatrician and psychoanalyst, and he was actually saying that that's what good parents do. They hold their children so their children can develop and grow and that they become confident so they can hold others lately. And so that whole thinking of holding each other um, is, is to help one another grow and to become um, people who are able to deal with adversity and with stress and when things don't go really their way. And he actually, um, or his thinking has been picked up by a gentleman called Petri Gileri, if I pronounce that correctly. And he, he, he got it a little bit further and he said, well, there are actually two um, forms of two types of holding. Uh, one is the institutional holding and the second form is that of the interpersonal holding. And so if you ask yourself the question, what has your organization or school done over the past months to hold, you know, the people in that organization, then it's very likely, um, or I assume that it's very similar to what Talim has done. So the Talim CEO has on a regular basis uh, communicated with the teachers, but also with the parents about what Talim as an organization um, can do to support its stakeholders. So we were informed relatively early during the pandemic, during the lockdown, um, what Talim was going to do uh, with teacher salaries. And they said, you know, we are in a very good position. We are not going to cut salaries. Um, they told us what was going to happen um, to um, the flight tickets. So everybody knew that that was going to be halved. Um, and they have been telling us all the time about, you know, travel. And we recently got a letter again that, you know, if you are able to stay this summer in Dubai, that your organization prefers people to do that. However, if you do have to travel, then, you know, that's OK as well. But please, you know, share that with uh, school leaders. So the importance of strengthening the culture of the organization by, by, by communicating on a regular basis has been very strong. And this is what we have done in our schools as well. We have been in touch with our teachers, with our parents and with our students on a very regular basis. 
And so another thing that we have been uh, trying to do is really to promote dialogue and to allow everyone to participate in the de decisions and to say that these are new challenges and we all need to adapt to these challenges and nobody knows the answers and we are here to listen and to try things. So very, very quickly, you know, we found out that a lot of our students actually were overwhelmed with um, all the online work. And so we started to change the way we were doing things by offering more project work so that reduced the number of subjects, but it also gave students more um, autonomy um, in the work that they were doing. And some of these examples of institutional holding is are, are on the next slide. And um, so if the yeah, OK, and then uh, sorry, um, this is when, when you don't have control over your own slides. The third thing that we have been doing with providing institutional holding is to be very uh, transparent and clear. Um, and this is also something that, that Winnicott was uh, saying that parents need to do when they, um, you know, raise their children. It's OK to say that we not always have the answers. Um, and so the transparency and clarity on how we want to move forward is very important. And what we have been saying all the time, also to our parents in weekly newsletters, is that, you know, it's Maslow over Bloom. In other words, it's well-being over academics. It is, you know, this, this approach of holding each other and supporting each other than having somebody at the top telling all of us what to do. And so in the next slide, you can see some of those samples um, of what we have been doing in term three. And this is really that institutional holding where we feel that well-being, you know, comes first and then, you know, the teaching and the learning can take place. So a couple of things that we have done, you know, we have changed the timetable because we quickly noticed in secondary school that a lot of our students were not attending uh, the, the lessons early in the morning. We reduced the lessons from 60 minutes to 40 minutes but also told the teachers that, you know, if they had a life lesson that was 20 minutes max, then that was OK, because we noticed that a lot of the students were actually, you know, switching off and not really participating. We reduced the number of lessons. As I said before, we started to offer more interdisciplinary project work that helped to reduce the number of subjects, but it also gave students um, the, the, the ownership to participate and to um, you know, come up with uh, topics that they were really interested in. So we had grasp uh, projects, we had a STEM project, we had a STEM virtual uh, uh, fair. Um, and then uh, and then for our grade 10 students, we gave them the option that if they wanted to drop the subjects already that they are not going to continue with in grade 11, that they could do so. So actually they started almost all students with the exception of two, they all started um, to focus on their grade 11 subjects um, in term three, just to reduce the, the, the pressure. We also reduced the number of summative assessments and started to focus much more on formative assessment. Um, for grade uh, six and uh, up to nine, we told them that they did not have to participate in the summative assessment week or exam week as the kids call it, and that we only had that online for grade nine and uh, sorry, for grade 10 and 11 students. And we also reduced the numbers, the number of exams um, that they had to sit. And then another thing is that we wanted to take the anxiety away of the term three report cards and we really focused on, you know, the best fit approach for the term three report cards. Um, we are not going to hold any anyone back. All the students will be promoted to the next grade level. Another thing that we did is that we started to meet more regularly online than um, what we did um, in our face-to-face -face school. So the pastoral team meetings, they are taking place now on a weekly basis. Um, the child protection meetings are taking place weekly now as well. And also the subject leaders, they meet more regularly, also now on a weekly basis. And most of these meetings, they were fortnightly or once a month. So we felt it was very important that we are constantly meeting and checking in to make sure that you know everyone who we are holding is doing um, well. 
I already spoke about, you know, regular communication. Um, so our uh, CEO from the tel from Talim uh, was uh, on a regular basis communicating with all the stakeholders. So did the school principal, the head of primary and myself were doing the same thing. And also the people who are on our pastoral uh, uh, teams. So this is what we did regarding institutional holding. Now the next slide is about interpersonal holding. And um, it, it was very uh, good to see um, what uh, Nada was asking you as the first uh, mentee question when we had that uh, ward cloud. And that is very much, you know, checking in with yourself. Um, so it's okay for everyone to acknowledge that we are um, distressed and this is not uh, what we are used to. And it's okay to admit that at times we find it very difficult to operate in this new world we found ourselves in and so unexpectedly. And so we need to preserve our well-being. We keep saying that we are in this together. And so that means that we need to monitor um, our well-being by recognizing how we feel. And some of you said that, you know, you have control over your routine. And this is exactly one of the things that, you know, really enhance your well-being by having that routine and sticking to it. And so we have actually found that our students who struggled in the beginning um, of online learning did not have a routine. And that was because, you know, they were not sleeping regularly, they were not eating well, they felt that they couldn't get out of the house and exercise. And they also didn't have quality downtime, um, you know, with with uh, family members in, in the house. So again, you know, it's very important to have that routine um, because it enhances our physiological well-being. And then the other point is that we also need to protect ourselves. So it's important to have a structure to the day. And it's important, you know, that we set boundaries. So one of the first things we did is we uh, actually we did it from uh, week one. It was more luck than anything else, but later it turned out to be, um, you know, a very good way to set boundaries is that we said to the teachers that only on Sunday morning they could inform the students about, you know, the life lessons of the week, the number of recorded lessons and when the Q&A session was. But that was also the time to say, and these are the tasks that we want you to do this this week, and these are going to be your deadlines. And so the students were then able to make, you know, a, a schedule, a planner for the week ahead, and they sent that back to their homeroom teachers who then gave them some feedback on that planner. But it was important that, you know, they had a structure in their day, that their work was being planned, um, and that, you know, there was also time for breaks um, and to relax a little bit. So it's very important that we as adults do that as well. So we have been talking now about, you know, not sending emails in the evening, not sending emails in the weekends, and that we sometimes need to say to others, I'm really sorry, but I'm not able to do this at this moment in time. And then the next point is really, um, you know, what we saw in the first uh, slide before we started, is that we need to be kind to uh, ourselves, um, that we should not get into a panic about the things that, you know, we, we don't have control over, but that we really need to focus on that, what we can do, and then try to do that to the best of our abilities. And that is really, you know, that can control mindset versus, you know, that, what, what Martin Seligman calls that learned helplessness. Um, we should focus on what we can do. So on the next slide is, you know, just a little bit, and um, I didn't want to put more on the slide because um, the print was going to, would be uh, extremely tiny then, but this is, you know, what we have been doing for our interpersonal holding. Um, is to look after our students, to look after our teachers, and also to look after our parents. So we had last week a CIS a virtual accreditation visit, um, and the CIS evaluators 
um, they were very impressed that we have that we are spending so much time um, to look after parental well-being. And the reason that we are doing that is that we want our parents to reinforce what we are trying to do with our students, because we feel that you know, well-being really starts at home and that, you know, the routines that we spoke about um, and, and setting boundaries um, and speaking to children about, you know, what we have um, in our um, control and what we don't have in our control is extremely important. So students, they they take that the, the, these well-being strategies um, into school as well. So we have been trying, you know, for our students to have some normalcy. Um, of course, it was heartbreaking for our grade 12 students and not to be able to sit exams because a lot of them were actually looking forward to that. Um, we tried to have our farewell uh, school assembly and our graduation ceremony. Um, we have been constantly supporting students with uh, changing university application requirements, which has caused um, some anxiety there. Um, but we have also tried to explain to parents by modeling this that it's fun to cook and bake together. Uh, there have been visual art competitions, um, physical education, fitness challenges. There has been a project on diet and nutrition. We have had many house assemblies. Um, the homeroom teachers, they check in with their students on a daily basis. Uh, the house leaders, they check in with the vertical homeroom teachers and their students. Our diploma and career related program coordinator, they check in with the grade 11s who actually feel that compared to the grade 12s, um, they are much more disadvantaged in their learning and preparation for exams next year. Um, so we are really looking after those kids. We keep them up to date with the latest uh, developments in the IB world and what the IB um, exam boards are, are trying to do to support the current grade 11 class. We have been sending positive emails home. We have been trying to issue house points and learner profile awards. The teachers made a video, um, you know, to, to, to tell the students that we are thinking uh, of them and that we do care about them. And for our teachers, lots of activities, especially in the beginning of the lockdown. Now things are easing up again and people are um, able to socialize more and are able to get out of the house. But especially in the beginning, in the first four or five weeks, and there were weekly quiz nights. And I know that a lot of schools have been doing that. We had Thursday afternoon teas or the JBS family get together. Um, we have been sending text messages uh, to, to staff on a regular basis just to see how they are doing. We have really focused on those staff members who were home alone during the lockdown, who had a really, really rough time. Um, and this week, you know, we have allowed staff to be back on a voluntary basis on campus um, just to help reduce for some people their anxiety levels. Um, I already I mentioned that we have really tried to look after parent well-being as well. We are very much aware that our parents are under a lot of pressure as well. Uh, many of them have reduced salaries. Some of them uh, have lost jobs or are worried that they may lose their job. Many parents are worried about, um, you know, the health and safety of their loved ones. So our pastoral counselor, who is absolutely amazing, has given a lot of online well-being sessions for parents. Uh, she also organized healthcare professionals to address our parents. Um, she has made available a data bank of resources that parents, you know, like almost like a library that parents can find resources. Um, and she shares with them, you know, the myriad of webinars that are um, being provided all over the world in case parents would like to attend them. Uh, we have had a, a number of, of uh, our parents who have asked our pastoral uh, counselor um, if they can have one on one sessions um, and she has been able to provide them. Um, and if necessary, parents are being referred um, to uh, to different centers here in uh, in Dubai. Uh, Talim um, last week uh, organized a digital detox weekend that we really were trying to stay away from our screens. Um, there were all kinds of activities for parents to do with their children. Um, and uh, 
what is happening, um, I think, next week um, is, um, you know, the Talim White School production, which is going to be an online musical. And we have as a school also uh, sent some surveys to our parents and students just to check in um, to see how people are doing. So this interpersonal holding that we have been you know, trying to do over the past um, uh, months is really to give people the feeling that you know their well-being is paramount and that there is no learning taking place when people don't feel well. And we hope that that is going to be the new normal where we're going to, to move forward to. So on the next slide, you know, we, um, yeah, so the next slide is, you know, really about our fragile learners and, and the kids that we have worried about the most and what have we done, you know, for our uh, SEND learners. And so our inclusion department has supported those parents have you know worked really hard to reassure them that their children's well-being is more important they have support parents with the continuation of therapy sessions online and that was especially the case in the beginning and now kids are moving back to you know some of the clinics that gives them you know support uh, with with speech um, uh, and, and, and other matters. Um, we have been supporting parents with the transitional planning for next academic year. We are preparing to help our SEND students to move back to school. Um, we are going to organize special days for those students so that they come to school when it's still quiet and there are not too many students so they they see again, you know, what, what the school looks like and where their classroom is going to be and who their teachers uh, will be. Um, but over the, the past months, we also have adapted the curriculum um, so those students were able to access the curriculum um, a little bit better because online was very often challenging to them. Our ILSAs have provided a lot of one-on-one -on -one support uh, with the SEND students and they also checked in with them regularly. Uh, we have been trying to boost their confidence by giving them rewards for their resilience and their perseverance. Um, and um, I have been in, in some of those sessions and it's absolutely amazing to see how well some of those students are doing. So on the next slide, Yeah, there is a menti question coming up for you and that is, you know, has your school already started thinking about, um, you know, and social emotional learning plan or a well-being plan, you know, when we're going to be back um, in school after the summer holiday or whether that is going to be online or in school or that blended model. So, how are you going to hold your students after the summer holiday? What do you have at the moment um, organized? So there are five options to choose from. Um, the first one is yes, we already have a well-being plan in place. The other option is we have discussed this and there is a draft. Uh, the one in the middle, we have discussed it, but there isn't a plan yet. That's the, the first one that comes up now. Um, or maybe you say, no, we, we haven't done that. Or maybe you just don't know um, what, what is happening. And it's really good to see that at the moment there are five participants and they're all um, talking or having a, a draft plan. Um, I think that most schools at the moment, um, you know, have a draft plan or in the discussion mode, and that's still because there is so much unknown. Um, and that is because we don't know how how COVID is going to develop over the next couple of months. Um, some people fear that maybe a second wave. Others are more optimistic and think that uh, we will be able to go back to school. So. I think you can all see at the moment what it looks like. Um, we have two people who don't know. One person who says, no, not yet. Seven people are in the discussion stage or nine people in the discussion stage. stage. Uh, five are saying that there is a draft plan 
and three lucky ones that already have a well-being plan in place. Excellent, very good. Okay, so let's move to the to the next uh, slide. And thank you, 21 people who who casted your vote. Um, and so when we go to the next slide, um, it's just summing up what we have uh, discussed so far. So moving forward with purpose and well-being in, at heart, I hope that you know there are four big takeaways uh, for you and for your school. And the first one is you know the importance of communicating regularly. And that is just so that people feel that they are not forgotten, that you know that they are valued. Um, and then the second takeaway is that it's important to be transparent and that it's OK to say that we don't have all the answers, but at least that gives people, you know, the feeling and the comfort that you are thinking about it, even though we don't have the answers yet. You know, you are the captain of the ship. You know what may come ahead um, and you will um, hopefully be prepared for it. And then the third big takeaway is what you um, what most schools of course do and that is really to reinforce you know their core values and so at JBS you know we have five core values and our first one is well-being and so it is very important and this is what we're going to do when we come back in AUKUS whether it is face to face or online or somewhere in the middle that we need to help our students and our teachers and actually everyone um, in our school community to identify, to understand and to manage their emotions. And then the second point here is that we need to prioritize the relationships and the human connections. And so we are not going to rush into the teaching and learning on day one. We are going to renew and rebuild the relationships with our students because we haven't seen each other in 3D for almost six months, which is half a year. And so it is important that everybody feels valued again by their you know, teachers and that that is more important than worrying about catching up with math and physics and English. And then what we also will continue doing is the well-being sessions for parents for reasons that I mentioned before. And then finally, the fourth takeaway is that it's so important to listen to your teachers, to your students and to your parents. We are all in this together. This is all a very new situation for us and we can learn from each other. And sometimes, you know, people who are not always in the kitchen, but just outside that kitchen have really good ideas of what kind of meals you should cook for them. So please listen to everyone. This is really a top down, bottom up, squeezed in the middle approach. And we really hope that that new normal is going to help us focus on what is really important. And that is the well-being of all the people who we hold. So hopefully they can hold us in return. So thank you very much for um, listening. I am really looking forward to some of the questions and we go over to Magnus. Thank you so, so much, Erica. Thank you very much for this very insightful presentation. I think we've all learned some great tips and tools that we will take with us moving forward. Uh, we are now going to move on to the uh, Q&A bit of this webinar and in the registration forms that you've all filled out prior to this webinar. Many of you have submitted some questions that I will pose for Erica. I'm also going to try and include some of the live questions that I can see on the right hand side that you're posting in our chat feature. Well, let's kick this off with our first question, Erica. The uh, headline is adaptability. How do you feel that teachers have been able to adjust their thoughts, actions and emotions in order to effectively navigate this new and changing and often uncertain situation? Have you come across any obstacles and how did you overcome them? Yeah, um, I, I read once that an obstacle is actually an expected challenge. Um, mm -hmm. And so when you look at expected challenges, then um, you know, there are always way to go around them um, because an obstacle very often feels that that is something that that blocks us. 
So um, what we have been doing at the start is, you know, to listen to our teachers and to um, to also um, ensure that they are able to do their jobs. So um, from day one, we did not follow the normal timetable. We thought that that was absolutely going to be a um, an impossible task because we have teachers at home with small children who are just not available to teach, you know, as they do during a normal school day. Um, we have said to some teachers, you know, in the first couple of weeks, it was OK to have recorded lessons, pre-recorded lessons. Uh, and then later, when they were able to have some sort of routine at home, we told them, OK, you know, now we hope that you're going to have some more life lessons. Um, that we we have spoken to teachers about the importance of having a routine as well and the importance of being you know kind to themselves and to inform us what they are what they are able to do and what they are not able to do and then it was very much my task you know to tell parents and in the beginning there were parents who wanted to have you know six periods a day and it was my job, you know, with with my uh, secondary leadership team, then to explain to the parents that that was not going to work, that that was not going to to be in the interest of their students, because they also don't want their kids to to sit six hours straight behind, you know, a computer. So it 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 was like, you know, a real team effort that you know we were looking after our teachers, um, mm -hmm. and that we were at the same time, you know, telling the students and you know our parents what was doable and what was not doable and mm. uh, you know we all know when we work in schools that you cannot make everybody happy but for us it was very important that you know that the teachers were able to adjust to this new way of doing things um, and we we noticed because we went into some of their online lessons we did notice that you know they started to adjust very quickly and and you know it is um you know, well done to all the teachers, not only at JBS, but all in Dubai and the world that we were so quick, you know, to, to change and to adapt to, to the new circumstances and that we learned so quick on what was working and what was not working. So I hope that answered the question. Yeah, thank you so much and a, and a big thank you to all the teachers. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I agree too. Uh, the next headline is effective e-learning class. So uh, there's a question here regarding sharing tips. So please, if you could share some tips for how to conduct an effective e-learning class. What are uh, some, some tips yeah. and suggestions uh, when it comes to, take us through uh, your thought process when it comes to prior to conducting a class. Yeah, well, you know, um, I, I think that actually, you know, um, there are not that many differences. Mm. OK, I mean, outstanding teaching is outstanding teaching um, and the relationships between the teacher and the student are extremely important. The problem, however, is that it's very difficult for teachers to read the mood when we are online. You know, when we are working in a classroom, a teacher, you know, they know right away who needs to be extended and who needs to be a little bit of extra time. But most of our teach, uh, of our students, and this is what we asked, and that was for child protection reasons, we asked them to turn off their cameras. Mm -hmm. And so it was very difficult, you know, for teachers to see how kids are doing and to read that mood. And that was another reason why we said, you know, don't have a 60 minute lesson, don't have a 40 minute lesson, have mm -hmm. a 20 minute lesson. And what we especially learned very quickly with, with the younger students is that project work is so much more important. And so we started to use the lesson time as a check in um, uh, session and not so much as a lesson. So the first lessons were really to explain and we were working with uh, Wickens and McTie's grasp uh, uh, model, which is that, you know, we had a concept. So we had a concept of conflict and then the students, they had to come up with a goal and then they had to say what role they had. So some students said, I want to be a reporter. Somebody else wanted to be a doctor. Somebody else wanted to be something else. OK, so I think that most of you know what the grasps model is and not, you know, Google it later. But it gave students 
um, you know, some ownership, like, hey, you know, I can say what my goal is going to be. I can say what role I'm going to have. I can decide who my audience is. And so we had students in pairs or teams of three work together and then twice a week they would check in with the teacher. Now the teacher now did not have to prepare the lessons. OK, so the teacher checked in with this with those students for for 15 minutes and actually that check in was how is it going? You know, are you mm -hmm. making progress in with your pro project? Are you guys going to, uh, you know, how's the collaboration going? Mm -hmm. And so we were actually, you know, really focusing on, on the learning, but also on that well-being aspect. And now those students, those the one student, the two or the three, they had 15 minutes of their time with the teacher mm -hmm. and so we felt that that made a much bigger impact on on the learning and we saw kids who are usually not so engaged mm -hmm. you know get really excited you know we we had a couple of boys they were looking at, at conflict i've never heard of this rapper called uh, tupac uh, if i pronounce that correctly yeah, tupac. yeah passed, passed away in 97 yeah <laughs> yeah so i learned okay and how tupac you know, had had a, a lot of inner conflict, uh, but he also had conflict with with other people, and how he, um, you know, uh, presented that in his music, and that later in life he changed when he started to resolve that that conflict. And this was what grade seven students were looking into. So mm -hmm. they learned so much about that concept of conflict, but it was something that they wanted to do, and they, and they did extremely well. I was in their presentation, um, and I learned about. You know things I'd never heard of, but they're very important in the lives of yeah. teenage children. Gangster so, rap in the nineties. <laughs> so, um, and apparently, I should have known about that. What I'm trying to say is that the learning needs to be meaningful, and it needs yeah. to be, you know, really authentic, and it it yeah. needs to be something that kids can take ownership of. Um, there was not a group of kids, you know, and, and they did a role. There was a one boy on his own, and I think he had a little relative, a little niece uh, in there, or a cousin in there as well. And, and he, you know, he was on a Viking ship, and this was one of our SEND students, and he had made this entire movie on his own. He had written the script and he made the movie because he was interested in, you know, in, and the concept was uh, uh, exploration. And so that is what he wanted to do. And so it's an open ended. Uh, task and the mm. kids they can really lose themselves in it and the SEND students can be part of it as well and then at the end you know you you have a virtual exhibition and everybody presents what they have been doing over the past three four weeks um so so that's my answer um yeah don't thank teach. you for that very very passionate and insightful answer thank you so much <laughs> we'll move on to the next question uh summertime preparation time Please share with us your suggestions for revision tools and appropriate summer activities to catch up with mind, body and soul and still maintaining well-being. Yeah, that's such a good question. And I'm sure that a lot of schools already got some of those questions from from parents. Mm -hmm. And it's again, you know, I think our role to take that anxiety away that kids are behind. You know, we were all in the same boat. So if you are talking about, you know, being behind, then let's say that we're all equally behind. Um, what, what we um, are asking students to do is to read and to read a lot and to read anything that they're interested in. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and 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 again, you know, we need to have that home school partnership, and the parents need to understand that that is important as well. So we want them to read in English, in French, in Arabic. Um, that is very very important. Um, we are also asking our parents to work with students on uh, developing their character strengths. And um, there is on the uh, you know the VIA character.org. There are all kinds of uh, questions or little uh, exercises that parents can do with their children and maybe the older students would like to do that with their friends um, and so they can, they can continue working on those those uh, you know developing their their character strengths um, there will be some parents who would like their students you know to do math um, uh, and, and maybe science over the holiday um, we have a lot of online uh, resources which we will make available, but we will stress the fact 
that this is very much on a voluntary basis and that what we want parents to do with their children is, you know, play a game, uh, try to go for a swim, you know, have routine in the day. Uh, and I think it is going to be very difficult, but please, you know, um, have your sleeping hours at night and the awake yeah. hours during the day, you know, eat well, go to the gym. Um, I think that many of us, you know, during the lockdown, when the, you know, when we were not able to go out, uh, gained a couple of kilos. And, yep. <laughs> and, you know, use, up to that. <laughs> yeah, use the summer months, you know, to get back into shape. Um, yeah. Even though it's very hot outside, be creative, you know, go to the malls. They're open for everybody now, um, yeah, I see it, yeah. including little kids and the elderly and go to the malls and use that, you know, to walk. And, and so, you know, don't forget that well-being as, uh, aspect. So keep that routine. Um, and, and if you want your children to do some math and, and, and some science or some English, um, then make sure that they don't spend so much time on their computers. Um, and I think, again, you know, it, it, it's the parents. It's great that they want the kids, you know, to work over the summer holiday, but it will also be great if they, you know, tell them uh, stop gaming and stop, you know, so much time on social media. Go move, yeah. cook a nice meal. Uh, yeah. Eat well. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much. We're not going to try and catch two, two of the live questions here. Uh, we're short of time, so not too too long of answers. But there's one question here. What are uh, the areas covered in your regular CP meetings? I believe CP standing for yeah, the child protection, protection meetings. Oh, child yeah. protection. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, uh, sorry for that. Um, okay, so in our child protection meetings, we talk about any student that uh, we are concerned about. Um, yeah. And that is not so much from an academic point of view, that's very much from a well-being point of view. Mm. And um, over the past months during the lockdown, um, it was concerned about students that, we, that were not participating online, who were disengaged. Mm. Um, and then, you know, uh, trying to get in touch with, with the parents. So we had for like a period of 10 days that we couldn't reach the parents and we couldn't reach, um, you know, the the, the, the child and so there was a real concern um, so we we have those meetings uh, fortnightly when we are in school and we do it with our pastoral counselor and they had a primary they had a secondary and school principal and these are the real child protection cases you know is that student well um, is this student displaying behavior that we consider unusual um, do we need to, to, to speak to the child depending on the age of the child do we need to start speaking to the parents do we need to get um, you know, an expert in, in, involved. So it's very much safeguarding issues. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Uh, we're going to try and catch this one. Uh, let me just see, where are we? Um, uh, how does, so this is more, yeah. How to, stay in, how to stay in a school with no teacher well-being or communication between teachers and principals? So what, what would be your advice to, to a teacher that, that may feel that, that uh, well-being doesn't have such an importance in, in a school. How would that teacher sort of approach management or tech? What would you recommend? Oh, well, first of all, it breaks my heart, uh, you yeah. know, when you, when nobody is holding you. Um, um, you know, we, we, and I hope that that is very clear, but we need to hold each other. Um, but I also feel that, um, you know, it, it takes courage to show your vulnerability and it's yeah. absolutely okay to go to someone in the school that you feel comfortable with, if that is a middle leader or that is a senior leader in the school, mm. and just say, you know, this is something that, you know, I need personally. Um, mm. and, and probably, you know, my colleagues need this as well. You know, mm. we are in a very uncertain time. Um, and you can help us do a better job as teachers when mm. you take some of that anxiety away and mm. even if you tell us that you don't have the answer to you know that's fine but at least we feel that that, that you think of us and mm. and i think that um you know it, it, it depends a little bit on the leadership style in the mm. school but but i believe that all educators you know um are in education because they care about others and mm. some 
course, you know, we are so stuck in, in running the school and the mm. day to day nuts and balls and oh yeah, all these, the data that, you know, people need um, mm. that we sometimes, you know, forget why we are really in the school. And that is, you know, to well, ask educators, you know, what's the whole purpose of education is that we mm. prepare students for the real world. So that mm. means we need to learn how to deal with the ups and downs in life as well. And so be maybe, you know, your your leaders in the school just need to hear from somebody that even though they are amazing people and they do a real good job, uh, mm. X, Y, Z, that, that this is important as well. And so mm. I would just approach them, you know, have the courage to mm. show your vulnerability by um, telling them that you want more communication so you mm. can do a better job as a teacher. Fantastic, thank you. Lastly, it's not a question, but it's a comment from someone. And he or she is saying, I don't have a question to ask. Just wanted to say, Erica, you're awesome. Thank you for today. And I'd like to oh, end, end on that note as well. That Erica, I really appreciate to talk that. To you. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you. you again for your time today. I really appreciate it. Week 13, we're all exhausted. We have two more weeks to go. And, and please, you know, take care of your own well-being. It's a little bit like that, uh, and, uh, um, you know, the, the metaphor, you know, in the plane, you know, you need to give yourself oxygen first before you look after others. So please take care of yourselves. Thank you, Erica. Thank you so much. We're now going to hand over to Nada. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Magnus. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. You can't hear them, but everyone is clapping for you right now and showing their appreciation. Awesome job. Love the presentation. Really loved what you had to say. And to our audience, um, our esteemed listeners and attendees today, we hope that you found that the content was useful or that it inspired you to try something new. So I know we're a bit behind with time, but if may I ask you, if you have time, if you need to go, that's perfectly okay. For those that can stay on a couple more minutes, I'd just love to ask you three quick feedback questions before we end the session today. So if you go back to menti.com, you will see there a question. I'll just bring that up. For your feedback on today's session. So overall, how satisfied were you with the content, the structure, and the presenter? So I'll just give you a few minutes to respond there. Um, we really do value your feedback. This is how we can improve and keep a check on how we're doing. Um, so really appreciate your honest feedback there. Thank you very much. We'll just move on to the next um, point. Um, our second feedback question for today is, what was it that you enjoyed most about today's session? Personally, I loved the notion around well-being over academics. So thank you, Erica. You and I um, kind of see eye to eye on that. Um, so I really loved what you had to say about prioritizing well-being. And we can see here as well the sincerity of purpose of the presenter. Erica was calm in her explanation. It was quite simple to understand, making it simple to understand. how she said obstacle is an expected challenge. Yes, 
I love that as well. Very informative, well-being should be prioritised in all schools. I got reminded of the fact that you cannot pour from an empty glass, hence take care of your well-being first and then take, of, take care of others. Yes, sometimes we do need that reminder. Institutional holding versus interpersonal holding. I loved what you had to say there too, Erica. That there's so much out of our control. We don't know what August, September is going to look like, but thank you, Erica, for showing how much is actually in our control. The practical ways to enhance well-being at school. We love those practical examples that you shared, Erica, um, whether it's with students, teachers, parents. Those examples were wonderful takeaways, I'm sure, for many of our listeners today. The presenter was very easy to listen to. <laughs> I definitely agree to agree with that comment. I can listen to Erica for hours and not get bored. <laughs> Thank you, Erica. And obviously learn a lot from you as well. So this webinar has been recorded um, and it will appear on our website over the next couple of days. So if you enjoyed it and would like to share it with your leadership team at school, perhaps, especially for that person that uh, mentioned that they are looking for more support from, from, their, from their senior leadership team, perhaps this is one way to um, share your learning. So, um, the, the video will appear in a couple of days and feel free to go back, download it um, and uh, you'll be able to access her, uh, Erica's slides and the feedback on Menti um, through that link. You'll also be able to access all our other webinars as well. This is our 14th webinar and we've had uh, webinars, other webinars on wellbeing, on workload, um, the early years, inclusion. So there's been a variety of topics that we have covered um, over the last two months. So you are free to access those webinars as well. Thank you everybody for those that fantastic feedback. And just finally, now that you've listened to this webinar and you've taken on a lot of what Erica had to say, what will be the first thing that you do to move forward with purpose and well-being at the heart of your school community. Is there something there that Erica mentioned that perhaps, aha, uh -huh, that's something that I could do at my school? We'd love to hear from you. Or perhaps you have, you've been inspired by what Erica has had to say today, and perhaps you've um, been inspired to try something new. Any new ideas that you might have or are currently doing, would love to hear from you here as well, so that we've got some collective ideas across this group today to share with the wider community and with each other. First one, they're looking for ways to hold my team. hold my team, both institutional, institutional holding and interpersonal holding. Perhaps it's more regular communication with staff and parents and students. The aspect of transparency certainly resonates with me. I'm a parent of three kids and I genuinely appreciate the transparency my children's school provides to us as parents. And I think that's quite important. Even if you don't know the answers to everything, I think just being vulnerable and, and transparent is, is important during these times. I will ensure to check on my colleagues regularly and provide emotional support as and when needed, as we need to hold each other as a team. Absolutely, that is so important. 
many of us are here without family, without that extra support that we might be used to back in our home countries. However, Dubai and the UAE has become a home for many of us and our schools and our the people that we work with have become our family. So it's really important to to check on in check on each other during these times. Helping my students to feel happy. Recognizing how we feel and also accepting how we feel that it's OK to feel struggle. It is OK to feel not so well. And it's recognizing that and accepting those emotions and then deciding what to do about it. Digital detox, yes. Especially when you have kids who have been on devices all week because of school. Um, so yes, absolutely. Keeping in mind well-being over academics, taking care of my own well-being recommending students to avoid screen time and spend time doing physical activities, cooking, swimming, gym, and doing more during the summer, work on things in my control. Thank you so much for everyone that has been contributing to the Mentimeter. It is genuinely appreciated. So heartfelt thanks to you all. OK, so just wanted to bring your attention to um, our In This Together Dubai microsite that KHDA has put together. And it is basically a repository of uh, free resources locally and from around the world. Um, there are free resources for teachers, parents and students that can be easily made easily accessible. Um, it's just absolutely heartwarming to see and know that so many people are wanting to share things for free and really it is about being in this together and on that same website you will find the videos that I mentioned before of all of these webinars and you'll also find information about upcoming webinars. We usually run these webinars every Monday and Thursday at 4 p.m and we have one coming up next week as well so you'll find details on the topic and the presenter on this website. And just finally, just to bring us back to where we started, I know a lot of you have come across this quote before. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So I'd like to leave you with that note. Um, do take care. I know things are hard at the moment. We really do thank each and every one of our educators out in Dubai at the moment that are putting in so many hours and are supporting students um, with their learning and transforming the way they teach. So thank you all of you, thanks to all of you so much. Try and have a lovely weekend. Do take some rest, do a digital detox this weekend and I hope to see you next time. But from my home to yours, stay safe, be well and thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you and goodbye.